remember, when the movie starts, turn up your hearing aid. They got sound now? <laughs> your turn. Mm. Oh, um, uh, I'll have a, um, a large popcorn, no butter, no oil, dry air pops with a Diet Coke. Anything else? Yeah, a Goobers, a large Snickers, and a nachos with extra cheese. Man, you can eat all that stuff in the zone? Yeah, the Twilight Zone. Mm. Why can't I lose weight? Maybe I should see a therapist to help me stop beating. You know, it's the only thing I haven't tried besides diet and exercise. You know, Dr. Miller could help you. He is an absolute genius. I'm telling you, he's the next Sigmund Freud. He's an excellent doctor, the best. You been to Dr. Miller? No, Freud. <laughs> oh, God. There's Dr. Miller. There he is. Oh, let's go over and say hello. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If he asks me how I am and I answer him, is he going to charge me? <laughs> oh, look at you. You're so nervous. Well, Val, we are in the presence of genius here. Oh. My only goal is that someday I be as confident and brilliant and sophisticated as that man. You mean the one picking his nose? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. A man as distinguished as Dr. Miller doesn't pick his nose. Wow, he's really digging up there. <laughs> God. You know, it must be so nice to be so comfortable with yourself. What's your shrink trying to do? Pick his own brains? Oh, he's coming over. He's coming. Oh, friend, what a surprise. Hi. How are you? Have you met my friend? <laughs> Rule number 27, just because you're dumping someone doesn't mean you shouldn't look your best. Oh, God, that's him. What are we going to do? Okay, don't worry. I'll let him down gently. Destroy him. <laughs> All right. Can I listen? Oh, sure. What do you think the butler's pantry is for? Just looking for a ladle. Ah, oh, here it is. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, Ed. Hi. I brought you some spare ribs. Oh, you are some little operator, aren't you? <laughs> First you ask Maggie out on a date, then you toy with her emotions, now you're bringing me pork. <laughs> are you some kind of delivering Don Juan? What are you talking about? Us, me, you, it's not gonna happen. You think... Miss Fine, you're old enough to be my Watch it. sister. <laughs> I mean, I, I, re I really like you a as a friend. Whoa, wait a minute. Are you dumping me? These ribs are for dumping? No, they were more like kind of a bribe. Oh, for what? Well, I was hoping that maybe you could give Mr. Sheffield my picture and resume. Picture and resume? That's what you wanted to ask me? Yeah, you know, for when he casts his next show. Well, why didn't you just ask Maggie that? Well, because I really like her. And I, I, don't know, I just didn't want her to think that I was using her. Oh, but you don't mind using me? Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, I, I, I just thought it would be easier for you because you're not shy. You're, you're... Pushing. Exactly. Just give me the damn pictures. Oh, is Maggie here? I thought maybe we could go for a walk. One minute, I'll get her. There are 19 rooms in this house. You all ended up in here? I need a little bit. Returning the little. All right, so you all heard. I feel your pain. <laughs> Thank you. Come, children. So does this mean that I have to dump him since he dumped you? Technically, he didn't dump me because he never liked me in the first place. Okay, so there's your loophole. Make your move. Thank you. Go take a walk with your boyfriend. Let this pushy old broad eat her ribs in peace. <laughs> May I? Of course you can. Have a good time. Thank you, Dad. Well, oh, you're certainly singing a different tune. Hey, if I don't open the door, she'll only sneak out the window. Oh, that's very 
wise. Yeah? Yeah, some pushy old broad told me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Miss Babcock, sir. Well, I hope she brought Chester. Hello, all. <laughs> Chester! Oh, good boy! Oh, thank God you're okay! Fran, we don't want to go out to dinner with our grandparents. If they don't like you, then we don't like them. How are we supposed to be nice to people who hate you? Oh, sweetie, they don't hate me. Yeah, Fran, they really hate you. I don't understand why you don't even try to fight for us. Oh, sweetie, this is a very big decision. I mean, it's all very confusing. I just don't know what to tell you. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Look, you guys love me, I love you. What does the adoption paper do? It doesn't change a thing. It's just a little piece of paper. It doesn't mean anything. Piece of paper meant a lot when you wanted to marry Daddy. Well, that's different. That's community property. <laughs> Don't fight for us. We don't want to be a burden. We'll see each other at weddings and, God forbid, funerals. Oh, sweetie. They're not taking you away. They're just trying to stop the adoption. That's all. Now, come on. I want you to have a nice evening with your grandparents. Go put on something pretty and handsome. Just no animal princess sequence. These people have no regard for haute couture. <laughs> If something did happen to Daddy, they could take them away. Because you're not a legal mom. Darling, do you think I should go with the brown suit or the gray herring? Oh, coat? all right. Look, I was arrested in 84. It was powdered sugar. And my principal did have an affair, but it was with Mrs. Simon. I had nothing to do with oh, darling, it. Darling, 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 what are you talking about? Oh, sweetie, if we go and fight in court, they are going to do an investigation on me, and there are things that you don't know about me that might come out. I mean, ugly things, very ugly things. <laughs> darling, darling, I know all about your past. Before I hired you as my nanny, I had you thoroughly investigated. What? Yeah, well, I'm not about to trust some stranger with my children, am I? Come on, didn't you, uh, didn't you check me out, hmm? Oh, I checked you well. So, you see, you have absolutely nothing to confess. I know everything about you. Everything? Even my age? Uh, actually, that was the one thing even the FBI couldn't verify. <laughs> the closest they could get was 31. 31? Well, I guess the truth is out. <laughs> Uh, listen, you guys, we really need to talk to you about this whole adoption issue. Yes, we, we don't want to fight you, but we will if we have to. Now, we want to do what's best for the children, and what's best for them is for all of us to be a family. Well, if Sarah were still here, we would be. Calm down, Roberta. They didn't kill her. <laughs> oh, Roberta. I don't mean to seem insensitive. I understand that the kids are your link to Sarah, but my adopting them is never going to change that. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, I worry that they don't even think about their mother anymore. That's not true, Grandma. We think about Mom all the time, and sometimes when we really miss her, Fran puts in old videotapes of her and watches them with us. <laughs> and every year on Mom's birthday, Fran has us light a Yortzite candle for her. A what? Well, it's a Jewish tradition. It sort of lights the way to a happy afterlife. Also in the Hebrew tradition, we're only allowed to light one candle on Fran's birthday cake, but I forget what that means. It's in the Torah. <laughs> it's very sacred. Roberta, Ernest, you'll always be welcome here, and you'll always be part of our family. Yes. Why don't you two join us and the children for dinner, and we'll continue this conversation. Mm -hmm. Listen, Ernie, is there anything that I can do to get on Bert's good side? Well, is there a Wiley's for ribs around here? <laughs> She's wild for the onion loaf. Uh -huh. <laughs> Listen, you guys, I want you to know that I love these children so very much, and I promise you that I'm going to provide them with a warm, loving, and most of all, stable environment. What time do you open? <laughs> Talk about elegance. This is the first time 
I've ever been in a toilet on a plane where I didn't feel like I was going to be sucked out over the Atlantic. <laughs> Thank you. Say, are they even going to say two words to us? I mean, how am I going to get to know Theo better? Franny, leave them alone. Every minute they don't talk to us, they make another million. Well, money is nice, but there are more important things than... Is that lobster? <laughs> Hey, babe. Not now, I'm eating. <laughs> Aren't you gonna eat, too? No, I'm gonna nap. How could you nap with 19.95 a pound staring you in the face? <laughs> Franny, stick with me, and you will be sleeping through caviar. I hate waste. <laughs> How's the champagne? Oh, nice and dry. <laughs> you know, at Sizzler, they take it out of the shelf. <laughs> I've never been to Paris, but I've always wanted to go, ever since the Facts of Life girls went there. Babe, you and Kathy do the town. Buy whatever you want. But I'm not going to see you all day. Oh, look at that little lip. Like a baby. Whatever you say, baby. Kathy, baby, come sit in Daddy's lap. What's he gonna do, burp you? If he wants. <laughs> Mr. Sheffield! Mr. Sheffield! I told you, kids! <gasps> oh, Mr. Sheffield! Oh, look, you're wearing the new soap on the rope. I got you for Christmas. What? What is it? I just... And he was... And I saw... Yes, no, you're hysterical. Now, don't make me slap you. I just saw Mr. Sheffield naked. It was horrible. Mm, I keep telling him to get to the gym. I'm serious. It's like seeing your father naked. My mother should be so lucky. Would you like a cigarette, Miss Vine? Oh, he can't even stand to be seen without a tie. Oh, this is going to put him right over the edge. You know, when I first started in service, I walked in on the Queen Mum. In the shower? On the throne. <laughs> he's not strong enough to handle this. I don't care how many bulging muscles he's got. Well, just promise me one thing. What? Let me tell Miss Babcock. <laughs> There you go. Now, do I get some kind of guarantee with that? Yeah, I guarantee I'll be back. <laughs> Gramps, let's get a start on those stairs. I want to make it home before Letterman. <laughs> You're leaving me just like that? Don't cling. You're suffocating me. <laughs> we just met. And it was nice while it lasted, but it's over. Let's not drag this out. <laughs> Dad? I'm no expert on this, but was I just dumped? Yes, son. <laughs> Welcome to the Battle of the Sexes, where they sneak up on you when you're most vulnerable, utterly humiliate you, then leave you trembling, exposed, and naked. <laughs> yeah, okay, but dumped or not, did I get to first base? Well, yes. All right! <laughs> Ah, um, what, was there a paper this morning? Yeah, you read it at breakfast. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Sheffield, 
I have to see you a sec. Oh, I think you've seen quite enough. Mr. Chef Bear was important. <laughs> all right, all right, but please, I beg of you, just get to the point. No more long stories about your high school family pets. Okay, okay, I'll just stick to the bare facts. I'm sorry, I mean, it's no big thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this isn't going well. Let me just cut to the chase. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry I walked in on you, but you have nothing to be ashamed of. Didn't you say the human body is a beautiful thing? Oh, now, Miss Fine, you can't go comparing me looking at these girls for an audition with you walking in on me in the shower. It's, it's entirely different. Yeah, I'm not selling tickets. Although plenty of women would pay through the nose. <laughs> Miss Fine. I'm just kidding. I didn't see anything except for your double standard. My double what? You're double standard. You have one set of rules for boys and then a whole repressed Rapunzel thing happening for the girls. Are we back on this blasted party? Look, all I'm saying is that you need to trust Maggie as much as Brighton and knowing Brighton even more so. I trust Maggie. It's the boys I don't trust. Well, Maggie has to learn to handle 14-year-old boys, so when she grows up, she can know how to handle full-grown men, who, when you think about it, are a lot like 14-year-old boys. <laughs> well, you have a very good point. How annoying. <laughs> all right, she can go to the party, but she has to be back by 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? It is a good time to have a good time, but not too good a time. Fine, thank you, thank you. Now back to work. Mr. Sheffield, are you ever gonna look me in the eye again? Mm -hmm. I am looking you in the eye. Mm-hmm. Look, Miss Fine, surely you can understand this whole episode has been a little embarrassing for me. Oh, don't be silly. It all happened so fast. I didn't see anything. Good. You have nothing to be embarrassed about. Believe me. <laughs> Ma, it's me. Ma, hello. Anybody home? Oh, my God. <laughs> Knock before you enter a person's bedroom. Ma, I'm sorry. I, I hear sounds of ecstasy coming from your room. I figure you're eating a cheesecake. <laughs> Darling, if it bothers you, just forget what you saw. Well, that's not going to be so easy since it's burned in my cornea. <laughs> Darling, what are you doing here anyway? Just a minute here. I got to take a swig of Manischewitz. <laughs> Good vintage, May. <laughs> I asked you to get my stuff from Israel, remember? Oh, it's over there. What do you want with that junk? Oh, well, I talked Mr. Sheffield into letting Maggie go on a kibbutz, and I wanted to show her what a good time I had. Fran, you hated the kibbutz. No, I didn't. Oh, look, here's my old journal. I hate this kibbutz. <laughs> Friday, almost able to braid armpit hair. <laughs> Sent Val to Jordan to smuggle in Lady Bits. <laughs> you left halfway through the program, don't you remember? We had to tell them that Nana died so we would get back the deposit. <laughs> Why do I remember having the time of my life? What was so great about it? Mazaya, Shamat Marshal? Uh, yeah, yeah, bagel, bagel, shalom, matzah shalom. Now, come over here and knish me. <laughs> oh, yeah, now I remember why I loved it so much. That was where I lost my. <laughs> All right. So you did have fun. I was mm. wrong. So maybe Maggie will just have as much fun as you. Uh, that's 
sales clerk was so rude. Oh, I know. You ask to try on 20 pairs of shoes, and right away they get an attitude. <laughs> Hi, friend. Oh, Maggie, what are you doing home so early? Are you sick? Oh, I better not catch anything. I got unemployment tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> oh, honey, I feel terrible. Here I was out shopping, and you were homesick with no one to take care of you. I beg your pardon. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of Miss Margaret. Oh, actually, I'm not really sick. It's only, you know, my monthly friend. She's all yours. <laughs> I don't get it. What's going on here? Val, what comes at the end of a sentence? A parole? <laughs> you might have noticed that Val is not short for valedictorian. <laughs> now, come on, what gives? You've had your period four times this month. So? So, women don't get their period every week. If they did, all the men in the world would be institutionalized. <laughs> Which wouldn't necessarily affect my social life. Now, what gives? You're not having problems with your boyfriend. You're not failing any classes. You're trying to get out of gym. Oh, I have gymnastics this semester. Oh, the worst. Oh, the horse, the bars, the rope. Oh, I hated the rope. To this day, I can't even look at an extension cord. Well, thank God you know how I feel. Mm -hmm. So you'll let me stay home? No. Honey, every once in a while, you gotta pull up those gym shorts, lace up those high tops, and face your fears. Well, you could do it for Ann did. Write phony notes. <laughs> Val, turn your head sideways a sec. Did you know you can see clear through your ears? <laughs> this is a completely different situation. She doesn't have our gym teacher. You know, after World War II, a lot of Nazis fled down to South America. She came to PS19. Do you recognize any of them? Mm. Can number four push his hair back? Push your hair back, number four. Oh, now you're talking. Is that him? No, but doesn't he look better? <laughs> It's fine. Please concentrate. Oh, all right. It's hard to tell. He was wearing a stocking at the time. Put on the stockings. <laughs> oh, my God. It's him. The sheer elegance all day beige between the control top and the cotton crotch. <laughs> number two. It's number two. <laughs> Excuse me, Detective. Where do we recover our property? What? Well, the items that were stolen. Oh. <laughs> this is your first time, isn't it? <laughs> hey, Jim, why do you hear this one? <laughs> my Shakespeare. Oh, Mr. Sheffield, let it go. It's like my grandmother always used to say, life is like a box of chocolates. That's from Forrest Gump. <laughs> and they paid her nothing. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sheffield, cheer up. Yeah, we'll watch a little TV. That'll take your mind right off of Shakespeare. Brush up your Shakespeare. <laughs> now back to Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet. Oh, oh, wait, wait. They were just about to show Romeo's tush. <laughs> Miss Fine, please get these somewhere else. Mr. Sheffield, look on the bright side. Instead of your paper, it could be me that's missing. Don't try to cheer me up. <laughs> You know, I've got half a mind. Oh, you've got no argument here. <laughs> well. So help me, Miss Fine, if I don't get that Shakespeare back. You know, you can't bully me, Maxwell Sheffield. I am not some weak woman. Hi. Hi, <laughs> oh, look at her. The minute he arrives, she gets so... Docile? Yes. How does he do that? Fran, I don't want you to panic. What? What? We had to release him. He's going to do community service. Oh! What kind of justice is this? He mugs me and he walks? That's the way the system works. We lock him up, they let him out. <laughs> Meanwhile, I ate a couple of Bing cherries in the AMP and I'm wrestled to the ground like squeaky from. 
Look at you, you sweet little thing. What you need is a man around the house. All right, that's it. First of all, there is a man around the house. I'll lay out your pajamas, sir. Would you like warm milk or cocoa? <laughs> Thank you, Niles. You're fired. And secondly, there is absolutely nothing sweet about her. Why don't you head it upstairs? She happens to be brave, confident, and gutsy. And you've turned her into a simpering, whimpering child again. <laughs> anyway, I don't like what you've done to her. This is not the woman I know and... and... no. <laughs> Mr. Sheffield. So, thank you for stopping by, officer. She'll be just fine. Now, why don't you just run along and write some tickets, hmm? Great. I'll start with the limo parked out front in the red zone. Go ahead, give the tickets. Give me ten bloody tickets. I don't care. 